Well, what do we have here today, super friends? Oh yes, the amazing Yamaguchi New 52 Superman action figure. Could this possibly be the greatest New 52 Superman figure ever made? Well, we're gonna have to open this bad boy up to find out. But you know the drill first, we gotta look at the box art, which is, you know, typical for amazing Yamaguchi. This is very busy, very busy. Figure Complex Amazing Yamaguchi, powered by Revel Tech Kyoto. I love how they used a really old school 1940s Superman lettering in this one. Looking inside here, look at all the heads and hands, and is that, is that, could that possibly be a little cloth goods cape that I'm spying there? Ooh, a cloth goods cape to replace the hard cape? I'm there for it, dude. Anyway, top of the box. We have the same logo-y stuff. We have New 52 Superman illustrated by Jim Lee. Looking badass over here. We have some more stuff, like writing and logo-y bits. And fantastic artwork on this side. He was actually one of my favorite New 52 Superman artists. I believe he also did a stint in Red Hood and the Outlaws. Yes, yes he did. On the side we got a picture of angry fired up soups. And on the back, we have a whole slew of stuff going on. Like the top of the box is like, hello, we got five pictures of the figure. We also have little boxes that have five different options for the face. I do believe it only comes with four, as the options parts here suggests, though. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Nope. It does come with, it does come with five heads. And then, of course, we have all of this stuff down here, which says, uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I can't read it. And here's the bottom. I haven't shown the bottom of the box in a while. Oddly enough, even though I've never opened this before, it doesn't come taped shut. That is weird. Oh, look at this. See, I love how they just like totally fill their box art with stuff, with imagery. Look, more. We got Superman here. We got a logo here. So what will we find on the inside? Oh, see, there's more stuff. Pull that out. And we have a nice piece of artwork here, Jim Lee's artwork of the Man of Steel. Here is the clamshelly thing that it comes in. Yep, this bad boy definitely comes with a cloth goods cape. Fantastic. All right, we're gonna start taking stuff out of here nice and slow. Actually, you know what? I won't make you watch me do this. I'll be back in a second. Okay, now everything is out and all has been revealed. And dude, this guy comes with a lot of stuff. I mean, sure, he doesn't come with any kryptonite or a bottled city of candor or possibly a phantom zone projector, but he does have a total of five heads and five sets of hands, as well as an action figure flight base and two capes. He also comes with a little bag of extra pegs and stuff and a little instruction pamphlet on how to use this guy. Like how to change the hands, replace the cape, how to switch heads, and how to use the flight base. All pretty standard fair stuff. Now as for Superman's different face sculpts, he's got Big Mad, Shady Eyes 1, Shady Eyes 2, a flight face sculpt, and a neutralized face sculpt. And for the hands, he's got the fists, the open flight hands, the loose, sort of relaxed hands. He's got a pointy finger as well as a grabby hand. And then he's got two kind of, you know, d intense grabby hands. Now when we move on to the figure, dude, this thing is detailed to the nines. And it has that so fantastic metallic blue paint job to it. I think that it works really, really well. And I know because it's an amazing Yamaguchi, the body proportions are just a little bit weird, but we are dealing about a comic book character here. And I mean, let's face it, the artwork of, for example, Ed McGinnis is way different in proportion and scale than say, Jim Lee. The first thing that I'm drawn to when I look at this figure is the really sweet looking, fantastically done and very accurate New 52 Superman emblem on this guy's chest. Not only is it a separate piece that's been attached to the body, but the gold underneath is actually not part of it either. So this is really, really well done. Same thing with the belt. The belt for this figure, this whole area, as well as like a little bit of like the flaps hanging down here are actually a separate piece as well. Superman's boots are really well done. I really like these. These look exceptional. And it is a nice detail that the sole of the boots are actually a different color than, you know, the rest 
of Superman's boots. And everyone who collects amazing Yamaguchi figures knows that you're going to get these very visible rounded joints with the figures, the shoulder, the elbow in there. And honestly, with the Superman figure, they, they really don't stand out quite as much. And to be honest, all of the ugly stuff here, the unsightly stuff around the back, as well as the rounded, you know, ball joints and hinges in the arms here, you uh, can't really see them when you put the cape on. So it's, it's not that big of a deal. Now, before we go ahead and install the capes on this figure or do any kind of comparisons, let's check his articulation first. So the head for each one of these will have the same articulation. And the hair is actually a separate piece. It's got articulated hair. When you change the head sculpt, you leave the bottom part of his, his hair there. And it's actually really articulated, especially when you put the, the neck in there. That's like, that's amazing. If you look at him like that when he's in a flight pose, he kind of looks a little bit like an ostrich. But that is, that is pretty darn good. It has a really free moving but firm range of motion right up inside the torso here. The shoulders, as you've seen, you've got a rounded hinge right there. And on the inside, there's a little ball joint that connects the arm. And so you actually get an excellent range of motion with this figure just at the shoulders. Very, very good. Oh boy. Of course, there's a bicep swivel. And the way that this one works, it almost looks like they're trying to hide it with the bicep you know, kind of sticking out like that. But the bicep is sort of flat right here. The seam is flat. So uh, it's all right. It, you know, no, it looks good, actually. I, I don't really have any complaints about it. Of course, we have that rounded hinge for the elbow, rounded hinges for the wrists. There's actually also a bit of motion right here. It's not the same as the previous Batman figure because it doesn't go over top of his S insignia, but there is a bit of motion in the torso to give him just a little bit more range. I personally think they could have done without these. They probably didn't need them. You've got this articulation point right here in the torso, and it gives a great, a great range of motion. Like, I haven't used the waist yet. This is just the torso. That's fantastic. And it does go back a fair bit as well. It's a strange piece because if you'll notice, the articulation point is really low right here, low on his back, and then it goes around and up right here above his abs. And then of course, the waist has a nice full range of motion there. The belt moves so it doesn't get in the way of that articulation. And then down here in the groin, we have, what's going on there? Ah, two ball joints. We got two ball joints in his little groin there. And then this is something, okay, this is an articulation point I'm not super keen on. And that is, he's got a thigh cut, but the thigh cut doesn't go straight across. And so you end up with like, I just, I've, that's one articulation point I've never been a huge fan of with Amazing Yamaguchi. It's, it's right here. It's like the thigh cut. Amazing Yamaguchi, the knees for their figures... They're always done the same way. They get a good range. They're single jointed, but they get a really good range because you can see this little slice right here in the side. Da -da 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 -da. And this one actually looks better, I think, than the previous Batman that I reviewed a long time ago. That actually looks really good. Certainly an interesting way of, of attacking knee jointed articulation. There is boot cut articulation full 360, as well as his feet, which as you can see, the peg goes forward. So you have a pivot and you have the toe. Put all of this together. And this is really the gold standard for me as far as flight poses. If you can get him into a good flight pose, a good hero's flight pose, then and as far as I'm concerned, the articulation is just fine. Okay, so now it is cape time. Let's put the hard posy cape on first. No, scratch that. Let's actually look at the posy cape first. So you've got his black Superman emblem on the back there. Neither one has the complete emblem. It is kind of strange. Like it's, you can't really put it together. Like it doesn't look quite right. And when you have it together like that, 
it doesn't quite fit together. And around the front, you've got these two little pieces that hang down that are also articulated. These two little pegs right here sticking up, they just go in this little set of holes right here. You just pop them in, squish them down, and voila! You have a great big ugly plastic cape. Hooray! If the pre-posed plastic cape thing is, you know, your style, if that's what you're into, well, this is what you're you're basically looking at. You can, you know, have the cape. It'll it'll go up and it will stay up. You can get them into like flight poses where you're like, eh, eh. he's like, oh, just floating there, whatever. You I mean you know the drill? You know how a posed cape works. I generally find them unruly and annoying, so I'm gonna pull it off. Once I'm finished making this video, this cape is, is never being used ever again. And putting on the cloth goods cape is the same as putting on the other one. You got these little pegs, you stick them in the holes like that. Just shove them in there. And it's gonna look like they're not in all the way, but but they actually are. That's, that's as far in as they go. And then we've got these corner bits. What exactly? do I do with these corner bits? I would think that they should go in here, in the neckline here, but I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. Okay, so I've consulted the instructions and there is honestly no mention of where these ends go. Are they just supposed to sit there? Like, you can't really tuck them in. They're too big, they're too bulky. It's not really possible. So I guess they just, they just sit there? I don't know. I'm not really sure. You know what, screw it. I'm just gonna see what's going on in there. Okay, so here's what we have that goes around his neck and in his back, I guess. And when you pop that in there, uh, that's where it sits. Oh, it sits above anyway. <laughs> oh no, and you can't, of course you can't tuck it in there. Hmm, that is a predicament, isn't it? And here's the cape, it's got the wire. This is just the cape without the attachment. And I do believe it's one wire that starts here and goes all the way around. I don't, no, nope, that shit, yeah, it's just one wire. Okay, I've got a plan. What I'm gonna do is once the video's done, I'm actually going to take the neck part out and I'm gonna put some of the fabric, stuff it underneath here so that it actually fills the gap and comes right out of where his neck is. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. And I guess we'll get on to the comparison part. Anyway, so. You want to compare this figure to some other New 52 style Superman figures? Well, here we have the Mattel version, and on the other side, we have the DC Collectibles. And here he is with the amazing Yamaguchi Wonder Woman and Joker. This Superman is a big hefty boy. And finally, here he is with some other choice Superman figures that I'm sure we're all familiar with. So now what do I think about the amazing Yamaguchi New 52 style Superman action figure? I really like this. I, I wish the cape was different. Not gonna lie. I think that some of the face sculpts are a little bit cartoony, but that's just my preference. I am well aware that this is an import and this is just the style that he sculpts and designs. And it looks like something that could very easily come out of, you know, an anime cartoon or something like that. So yeah, I really like him. He is an import. If you wanna pick this guy up, you're gonna have to pay premium figure prices because, well, he is a premium figure. You're getting fantastic paint and build quality, a high attention to detail, and something that you're probably gonna wanna keep for a long, long time. Anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions. Hopefully you found them useful, and have yourself a DC day. See you in the next one, everybody. Bye for now.